everyone. I am Derek Tran from Infineon Technologies. As you may have noticed, the LED strip here on the table reacted when I walked in. This is an example application of Infineon's Sense2Go L evaluation board. Today, we will be talking about where you can apply radar technology, how radar works, and how to interface with the evaluation board. First, uh, let's go back to the LED strip. Here, you can see the lights changing when an object is moving back and forth in front of the radar. You can imagine this strip in, uh, mounted on a bicycle where the system detects oncoming vehicles, flashing red whenever drivers come a little too close. The system is actually detecting speed information from the radar, and if it reads an object that's moving toward the radar and uh, is above a certain speed limit, the lights change from green to red. Beyond controlling an LED strip, radar technology can be taken advantage of in many diverse applications. This technology is used for calculating the speed of an object, which covers applications from braking control to pedestrian warning lights out on the streets. And aside from blind spot detection, occupancy sensing, and security, one could even help a blind person help tell if he or she is about to walk into something. With a copious amount of use cases for radar, you can make game-changing solutions. Now, how does the sensor work? Well, the evaluation board has compact hardware, which Jagjit will now explain. So my name is Jagjit Bal from Infineon Technologies. I'm system application engineer for radar. Uh, so the demo that you just saw, it's made possible by our 24 gigahertz radar. Um, the radar, uh, basically any kind of radar, uh, transmits a, a, a signal, uh, which hits a target, comes back, received, down converted into IF frequencies. So if it's a continuous wave signal, it's called continuous wave radar or even Doppler radar. If the signal is modulated in frequency domain, it's called frequency modulated continuous wave radar. If you do the frequency shift, so it's called frequency shift keying or FSK radar. Uh, so currently the demo that you saw just now, the focus is on CW radar. So what you transmit hits the target, comes back and gives you a Doppler frequency or IF frequency. That frequency is proportional to the velocity of the object. So for, just to give you an example, so if you have a human which is walking at one kilometer per hour, you will get a Doppler shift of 44 hertz. Uh, if there is a car at 50 kilometer per hour, you will get a Doppler shift of 2.2 kilohertz. Uh, with Doppler radar, you can get the speed and the direction of motion if it moves toward the radar or away from the radar. Infineon has a broad portfolio for 24 gigahertz radar. Uh, we cover both industrial and automotive space. Uh, with our 24 gigahertz solutions. Uh, we have different configurations available with our transceivers. So you can have a one transmit, one receive transceiver. You can have one transmit, two receive transceiver. Um, we can also sync uh, multiple chips together. So in case, for example, you need a, a better angular resolution, you can uh, connect uh, a, one chip to another one uh, via the LO synchronization. Um, all of our chips are highly integrated, which gives a smaller form factor to the end system solution. Uh, our portfolio can also be found on infineon.com slash 24 gigahertz. Uh, one of our latest chip uh, that we launched is uh, BGT24 LTR11. It's one of the smallest chip in the world at 24 gigahertz, which has a complete transmit and receiver integrator ins inside it. It measures 2.4 millimeter by 2.4 millimeter. Um, in continuous mode, it consumes 150 milliwatts of power consumption and runs from 3.3 volt. Um, we have 6 dBm of out output power uh, coming from the chip and it's uh, guaranteed to operate in ISM band uh, via the inbuilt PTAT. Uh, one can use it for numerous applications, uh, which my colleague mentioned in the beginning. Uh, we have a reference board for this chip. Uh, so you can see here in the block diagram. Uh, the blue one is what is integrated inside the chip. So you have a power amplifier, LNA, and down converter signal that gives you IF, I, and Q. So that IF, I, and Q is going to a uh, onboard high pass filter and amplifier stages, uh, which then goes into our uh, XMC1302 microcontroller. Uh, the integrated ADCs digitizes those I and Q signals, uh, runs signal processing on top of it, and then gives you the velocity information and whether the object is moving towards or away from the sensor. Uh, the board has antennas on backside. Uh, these antennas have a field of view of 28 degrees by 80 degrees. So this is all what we have for our uh, reference board um, in from hardware perspective, uh, but Infineon also has its uh, de own development environment for the microcontrollers that we offer. Uh, my colleague will talk shortly about it. Hello, I'm Pooja Agarwal, 
from Infineon Technologies. I'm a system senior application engineer. Um, so I, this is the board that my colleague was talking about. It's connected to, you connected the board to a micro USB. And uh, the, the daughter board is just a standard J-Link Seger board. What you see on the left side is our compact BGT board. Then there are these GPI opens wherein you will get the information for your raw INQ and all the other signals that you can probe. You can program the software to probe to these signals and get the data. You will uh, essentially need two tools from uh, Infineon. One is Dave, which is our Eclipse-based IDE. So Dave you can download from infineon.com slash Dave. Dave allows you to program all our XMC-based microcontrollers. It allows you to flash, debug, program all the pinouts, as well as actually integrate what, what all is going on the board. So it also allows you to see the register maps. Uh, you can see all the apps. We have uh, plenty of tools available, uh, pre-built apps, which will give an example of how you can use the apps and uh, you can see the link on the slide right here. Second tool you would need is Micrium Probe. Micrium Probe is a, a debugger which shows the GUI of XMC, which, which I'll come to in a moment. So when you download Micrium from uh, Infineon's website, you'll fill a registration form, you'll accept the software license and you'll get the latest version of Micrium. This is a, how our GUI looks like. On the left hand corner you see two signals which is time domain signal, in phase and quadrature signal from our radar. On the left bottom window is the frequency domain signal of uh, those time domain signals. You can adjust the threshold, default threshold is 20. Uh, the target speed of the radar can also be seen, target approaching and departing. And based on the radar cross section of the object you can uh, decide your thresholds. Now I'll show you a live demo of our software. So this is uh, the board. Uh, as you can see, when I'm moving my hand away and from the radar, you see different uh, uh, INQ amplitude and also the direction. And the speed of the uh, speed in the dial also changes when I change the speed with which my radar, which my with which my hand is moving. So um, this is what you will get in the kit. Uh, one of uh, a very popular application that we can think of that this radar can do is. If, you, if you're replacing a PIR sensor, so if you put this at the entrance of a door and you can count number of people coming in and then based on the num number of people in the room, you can control your HVAC or your temperature uh, in the house. So um, looking forward to all your submissions and all the applications. Thanks for checking out these new Infineon technologies. Go to hackster.io slash contests to find the contest and apply. We can't wait to see what you build.